Good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning. Great to be here. Well, I want to get your initial reaction now to the president, to Janet Yellen, even Jay Powell, the Fed chair yesterday, sort of dismissing the idea that we're in a recession because of economic activity. What do you think about that? You know, we really are focused on the data here at Livecast, and I really would say that I'm not too surprised about what the data are showing because we are in such a unique labor market environment where it's we're operating from a position of strength that's not consistent with recessionary trends. Like you mentioned in the intro here, we've got really robust job gains. We have a low unemployment, pretty high quit rate still, and even rising job openings, right? Our own data at like has show that these uh, job postings have been rising throughout the months of July. So it just makes us rethink that rule of thumb that two consecutive quarters constitutes um, a recession, there is so much more that goes into that determination of whether we are or are not in a recession. And that labor market component is really important. Well, we just showed a graph of labor force participation rate, and we're going to bring that back up. That is from the St. Louis Fed. We have not yet recovered our labor force participation numbers from the pandemic. If you're looking at this arrow and that steep decline, that is the decline from February of 2020 until about May of 2020. And you can see the participation only goes back up. We're still 1% lower than we were when before the pandemic, and that's about 1.5 million people. So Ms. Crowfoot, my question for you is when the economy gains 375,000 jobs, but we have 1.5 million people who've not yet re-entered the labor force, doesn't that obscure some of our economic numbers? Because those folks are not counted in the unemployment numbers. Right, people who have left the labor force are not part of the unemployment rate. Um, and this just goes to that broader concern about labor shortages in the economy right now. You're right, we have not gone back to our uh, labor force participation rates of pre-COVID levels. And that just means that employers are going to still continue to have challenges and finding the talent that they need, even if we go into a mild recession, say because of some of the monetary policy that we've been seeing, because of demographics, right? We see an aging population. We see baby boomer retirements are accelerating on top of the labor force not recovering to its levels um, that we saw before. This means the labor market's gonna stay tight even through a mild recession and employers are gonna continue to have to be creative in order to get um, the talent that they need and to fill the positions that they will have, even though the demand will be lower um, if we do go into some sort of a, a downturn. Well, and you said at Lightcase, you focus on uh, the data there. So what are you seeing as far as labor force participation? What would get these people back? And do we need, you know, 1.5 million people or more to rejoin the labor force in order to see GDP go back up? More people means producing more things. So I would think that that would help the GDP. But those people, for whatever reason, have decided to stay out of the labor force. Exactly. Um, you're exactly right. I think what needs to happen is that employers need to start thinking about, um, you know, what are the unique circumstances that employees have that are really leaving them out of the labor market, those barriers to employment, right? Especially after COVID, we're talking about childcare uh, challenges, health challenges. Now we have long COVID that's keeping uh, employees out of the labor market. So employers having being more empathetic understanding those unique circumstances that are keeping people out and addressing them with unique benefits and flexible work environments and arrangements is going to help pull people back into the labor force again even if we have a little bit of a cooling um, there's still not enough bodies to go around so it's going to be a continued challenge as we move ahead and looking at that chart one more time the labor force participation has really declined since 2000 and uh, my understanding of those numbers, again, you are looking at the data, is that a lot of those folks that dropped out and never came back beginning 20 years ago, a lot of them are women. And you mentioned childcare, flexible work arrangements, things like that. Those are things, correct me if I'm wrong here, that a lot of times appeal directly to women. So we are trying to get women back in the labor force. Is that right or am I overstepping here? Well, we have seen actually that women's labor force participation has increased over um, several decades. And to be honest, it's uh, a lot of men, especially since the last recession, um, since the Great Recession, that we've seen less participation primarily uh, among prime age men. Um, so 25 to 34 in particular, uh, because the last recession was you know, really hit those um, male dominated industries such as manufacturing and construction, and they had a hard time coming back into the labor force. And we're still seeing some of the 
the, the fallout from the previous recession. So again, there's a lot of that employers can do to really try to beef up their talent pools and um, attracting both men and women is going to be part of that equation. So that's very interesting. You're saying that, that it's men that are causing this drop in the labor shortage. It's not women. And, and a lot of that has to do, you said the last recession, you're talking about the great recession, lack yes. of home manufacturing, lack of construction that's keeping men out of the labor force. Partially, yes. I mean, they have seen their labor force participation rates uh, decline over the last um, you know, decade or so, uh, whereas women have been able to climb back up, um, especially after um, you know, COVID. We have seen that women's participation rates have recovered a little bit more, uh, more faster uh, than men. So um, yeah, it's a unique economic environment, right, with so many challenges. And I think it just really speaks to the fact that employers have to be attuned to what is speaking to people, both men and women, in order to get them back into the labor force. All right, I got one more question for you. We've, we've gone over here, but I'm just very fascinated by this topic. When the jobs numbers come out for July on August 5th, that's next Friday, a week from today, and I'm sure the numbers are still going to look great, historic lows, but should we be releasing labor force participation alongside unemployment so we get a full picture or do really the unemployment numbers that come out are they the most important thing you know i agree you know labor force participation is a very important indicator especially now and we do have those data come out um, along with the total jobs number along with unemployment rates we see the number of people that are joining or exiting the workforce um, so those are all very important indicators and again labor shortages are still going to be with us um, even through any type of mild recession so that participation rate is really important to keep our eye on as we um, you know look through the next six to 12 months and see how the economy is going to unfold. Yeah, Fed Chair Jay Powell has been fond of saying there's two jobs available for every one person that wants one. So it sounds like we need more people that want jobs. And uh, that's what we were just talking about. So senior labor economist Elizabeth Crowfoot, thank you very much for coming on early morning. Great to be here. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation in your cable lineup. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-based, unbiased coverage.